We begin at noon with breaking news on KCAL 9. The monster Woolsey fire explodes again. There's been a new flare up in the Lake Sherwood area. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sandra Mitchell. Hundreds of residents who had just been allowed to go back home today forced to turn around a new emergency. They had to flee again because of that large flare up. This sparked uh, just south of Thousand Oaks and these live pictures coming in from Sky 9 initially reported just about 915 this morning at 50 acres, but this thing just took off very quickly. You can see where the fire crews are assembling on the ground there and they've been attacking it from the air and the sky, but a lot of people got very nervous because of this. You can see the huge plumes of smoke laying down that fire retardant area. This is off Portrera and Lynn Roads again near the Lake Sherwood and Hidden Valley Valley communication uh, communities. There was a mandatory evacuation just ordered for Lake Sherwood and Hidden Valley areas, and uh, a lot of people had been wanting to go back home. Then the road closures popped up, and they started attacking this fire again. Let's go to our Candace Crone, and actually we're going to check in with Cara Finstrom. She is in the Hidden Valley area, and this is one of the areas under these uh, new evacuations. Cara, I understand the the fire has now turned and it looks to be moving away from some of these populated areas. One year old area that had been blocked off right under the uh, fire. Uh, she was brought out by her in-laws and another man who was worried about some co-workers who were within that zone that they quickly sealed off. Let's give you a look at the hillside behind us here. You can see uh, no smoke visible at all here right now other than just the clouds and that is amazing considering uh, what we saw here earlier this morning uh, and then the massive response. I want to bring in Bryce Bennett with Cal Fire who is joining us uh, live right now. Incredible response, and very quickly uh, this flare up was put out. Talk to us about what you had in place, really anticipating this type of event. All right, absolutely. A stark reminder of what can happen so quickly. The area is bone dry, the humidity is so low, and the winds are still very high. It only takes one ember to start a new spot fire, just like we saw today. Crews are fighting the fire aggressively all over the fire. However, we have additional crews staged in areas to respond to new startups just as we saw. And I know there have been a lot of people voicing frustration to us out here on the street, to you guys, uh, asking, you know, why can't I get back to my home? Um, this was a good reminder of the threat that this fire, unfortunately, still poses. Oh, this is exactly the reason why we don't allow people back into their homes preemptively. We want to make sure that we have the area safe. And that includes utilities as well. People's general services to their homes may have been impacted. We have power lines down across roadways, but the fire is not out. So we need the public to be patient with us. We're doing the best we can to make it safe for you to return to your homes just as soon as possible. And I know I spoke with one woman uh, just within the last half hour here who said she's still nervous. Uh, what can you tell the folks who live in these communities? Newberry Park, about 12,000 residents here, uh, Hidden Valley, uh, all of these communities surrounding this hillside uh, about what's happening behind us because we don't see anything going on anymore. Right. The smoke has definitely died down. The activity has died down. Crews were able to contain this spot fire. It was never threatening any homes in the immediate area. It was a burn patch with a rocky outcropping. We put uh, everything we could on it. We had a uh, lower wind, so air tankers were very effective at containing it with the crews on the ground. Again, it's a symphony. Everybody working together to make sure that we can contain the fire as quickly as possible. All right, thanks so much for joining us here live. And Sandy, we've seen a couple of DC 10s continue to make drops of retardant on that hillside. He explained to me that's because they really want to make a good containment line around where this flare up took place. Uh, just extra precautions uh, for these communities. A little bit more confident than they were just two or three hours ago. All right, Cara, thanks for that. Let's check in with our Candace Crone. She's in the Newberry Park area, and uh, that is an area where about 12,000 people so live. Looking great. at these live Thank pictures, really it. Uh, Candace, it doesn't look too reassuring from this vantage point. Sandy, it actually has been changing minute by minute, but if you take a look now, things are uh, looking a little bit better. They have improved since when this fire first started, but 
Gonzo, actually, if you pan over to the left a little bit, there we have another column of black smoke. So, yeah, Sandy, things are really changing out here. The firefight from the air has made a big difference because we saw a lot of that black smoke when we first pulled up this morning, but uh, it has improved since then. I do want to go to some video uh, of the fire when it was at its peak. You can see some of the flames there. It attracted quite a crowd, a lot of people coming out of their homes from nearby neighborhoods, a driver's pulling over with their camera phones to take pictures. Uh, this fire is not far from the Sycamore Canyon, which is where a lot of neighbors told me that they go to hike and to ride their bikes. Um, we've also seen some deer uh, running around, other wildlife being pushed out of their habitat because of the flames. Now, we did speak to a man who lives nearby, he lives in Newberry Park. He says he was shocked to see yet another fire. So my wife and I, we went out for breakfast this morning and everything was calm, everything was nice. We were kind of like celebrating after so many days of fires that things were getting back to normal. And then all of a sudden when we came out of uh, Paneras, uh, we see this huge, uh, you know, fire here. So it is just uh, terrible for our community after what happened uh, on Wednesday night um, and all these uh, last couple of days. It's like we're not getting a break. Yeah, we're certainly not getting a break yet again. Here we go. Another plume of smoke. Uh, it looks like it's it started out a lot darker than it is now. So firefighters by air and ground uh, really making a big improvement here. There's, you can also, I don't know if you can tell, there's a line of pink, the fire retardant there. So they uh, put that down, obviously, to prevent it from cresting over and spilling over the hillside. Uh, but again, even though things have cleared up, it still has some neighbors in this area on edge. Uh, so they're really hoping that firefighters get the upper hand soon. Sandy, I'll send it back to you. Yeah, I know the people are hoping that, the people who live there, and also the fire crews. It's been an exhausting six days for so many people.